Hey everybody, welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. This is week four. Week four, we did it. We made it one month. This is insane. We did a whole month. We did a whole month and we're being semi-consistent. Um, before we uh, jump into the story, uh, we got two announcements and the rest we're going to wait till the end of the podcast. Number one is the drink of the day. The drink of the day, we're not going with a spirit, but we're going with a brewery. We're going with uh, Pastry Archery Root Beer Float and Ale. Um, the link to this will be in the description of the episode and Carly I think you have another announcement correct well yeah I just kind of wanted to go off that a little bit like you said the name of it but let's let's talk about the flavor a little bit is it worth actually buying how are you I know you're not normally a beer guy but would you buy this again Mm. it's actually um the shots were better (laughs) we we actually uh long story we're trying to do something a little bit different this week so um we went to um, a, a place that really sold uh, niche beers, local brews, and we got this, but they also had root beer float shots Yeah, that you could get. and They were um, really fun. Yeah. The, the root beer float shots were way, way better. They were like root beer, just like the soda, regular soda with that burned on the way down. It's yeah. all great. <laughs> but it, it, it's, hey, it's, a, it's a nice little change. Uh, definitely can't wait to get back to more of the... Um, uh, nice cocktail concoctions in, in future episodes. Definitely. Uh, and then Carly, I think you have a, a little progress on an announcement, correct? Yes. Well, that's the reason we don't have our third camera set up today mm-hmm. is because um, I am in the middle of working on our mural. There's a lot more to go, but I put a whole weekend into it and it is coming along quite nicely. You can see our little goat goblin here on the side. Um, just a little sneak peek preview for you all. Hope you really enjoy the uh, results. She has put a ton of work into this and we're trying to get it ready for the Halloween season. Uh, and, and we're really, really excited. Anyway, you know, I know you guys don't want to hear about this stuff. What you really want to do is get to the story today. Let's do it. So Carly, uh, what, what, what is the uh, tale that you're going to be giving us this evening? My tale this evening is the Wendigo Encounter. Mm. Am I saying that properly? Wendigo? So, Wendigo? It sounds like that. Wendigo? Wendigo? No, Wendigo. I Wendigo. Would say. Mm. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. Yep. All right. <laughs> Let's not ask Tom how to pronounce where it's going forward. <laughs> I can speak English decently sometimes. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Me? My son, Nathan, who was six at the time, my wife, Sarah, and our guide, Derek, were camping up in the northernmost area of Washington. Derek is incredibly superstitious, so he insisted we bring weapons. What does that mean if your guide, his name is Derek? (laughs) I mean... Superstitious Derek, not just like regular, you know, neighbor Derek. Like who names their son Derek? There's a lot of people named Derek. I don't know a That's single not a bad Derek. name. I think if you are in a ghost story, Derek is a horrific name. Who, a- a- anyway. What's continue. better, Paul? Is that bad too? I think Paul lasts longer than a Derek. You mean if a Paul and a Derek were both in a ghost story, yeah. you're saying Paul would last longer. Paul lasts longer than a Derek. Well, apparently Derek is a, he's a guide here <laughs> out in the wilderness. So anyway, <laughs> Derek is incredibly superstitious, so he insisted we bring weapons. So I had a 12-gauge shotgun, and he brought a 22 rifle. Sarah and I were set on edge from a park ranger, who seemed very tense and uneasy. He stopped us, and instead of confiscating our weapons, told us to be careful and stay safe, then sent us along our way to the camp. This has got to be Texas. <laughs> Washington. <laughs> It said it Washington, D.C.? No, Washington State. Oh, that makes more sense. Wilderness. Yeah. I wouldn't think you'd camp in D.C. Right, 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 right. After about eight hours of hiking, Derek got us to the area we were going to set up camp. We immediately got a fire ready to light and set up our tent and bags. I made Nathan some food while Sarah ate a snack. We decided to get a lay of the area, so me and Derek hiked around for about an hour or so. Just Stop. Me and Derek. Stop. (laughs) Follow the story. Come on, get in the mood. (laughs) Everything seemed normal until Derek saw something about 100 yards down the path we were on. We walked closer to investigate and saw drag marks. 
It looked as if someone had killed a buck. There was a whole outline in the dirt with a small dried pool of blood as if someone grabbed it from the antlers and pulled. That wouldn't be possible for a man to do. The buck or whatever it was would have been way too big for that. At that moment, Sarah called out for help since Nathan had fallen and skinned his knee. So we rushed back to base camp and needless to say, uh, I needed to make the fire a little bigger. I'm sorry to cut you off, but so I don't have kids yet, <laughs> but I really feel like Carly. Yeah, we're getting married, by the way. Spoilers. So uh, if we had a kid, I really hope she wouldn't have to call out for help for me. She seems really helpless. Yeah. To just be like, listen, my son just scraped his knee and this is beyond my medical ability to help heal. I don't know if you've noticed this yet, but so far dad has made Nathan dinner while Sarah ate a snack. Hmm. And now Nathan scraped his knee and Sarah's calling out for help. So there's probably, there's a backstory to this. There's gotta be. Because there's a reason he him and Derek wanted to go off together. <laughs> they needed some time away. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Um, after helping bandage up Nathan's knee, Sarah put him to bed while Derek and I sat at the campfire pondering what we saw. Later that evening, we were awoken to the sound that sounded like Sarah calling out for help. Everyone rushed out of their tents, including Sarah, but we could see nothing out in the dark. We looked at each other and our blood went cold. What was going on? Again, we could hear what sounded like Sarah's voice coming just from down one of the trails. Derek told us to stoke the fire and that he would go check it out. Derek, Derek, don't do this. We went back into our tent to check on Nathan, who luckily was still asleep. Jesus, he sleeps like you. <laughs> I'm good at it. <laughs> It's a talent. Your mother's screaming, and then I'm like, oh, "He's I'm fine." Out. <laughs> Sarah looked worried. I told her it was most likely just a bobcat or something. <laughs> it's a parrot. <laughs> it's an owl. I just like to think that for a minute there, there's that moment. Where it's like they all of them deadpan stare at each other. Like, that's not Sarah. <laughs> like, I just <laughs> they're all surrounded by the fire. All right. All of a sudden, a gunshot rang out in the forest, followed by a guttural scream. Was that Derek? I ripped open the tent and started yelling for him. We stood there for what seemed like 10 minutes, yelling out for Derek, when all of a sudden we could hear his voice screaming for help. Help! Help! I told Sarah to stay with Nathan as I grabbed the shotgun and ran down the trail to the voice as fast as I could, when all of a sudden, I saw an outline of a creature about 90 feet away that seemed to be in the shape of a buck, a deer, standing over what was left of Derek. Jesus. It had unnatural... Pause. Let's rip for Derek. Hey, you weren't a Paul. It had unnaturally long limbs with the head of a deer skull and antlers protruding from each side. The skin was tightly pulled over its bones, and it had the complexion of ashy gray skin with glowing eyes pushed back deep into their sockets. In fear, I quickly unloaded two shots into the creature and heard a loud blood-curdling cry. Yet, to my surprise, the animal hadn't moved an inch. I noticed the stains on the side of the animal. It looked like blood was running down the edge. Then the creature jumped high into the treetops, disappearing into what seemed like thin air, leaving Derek's remains behind. Then the <laughs> okay, if I see that... <laughs> now what? Like, now what? You know what? I can always get remarried. I can always have another kid. I asked, we're just, go. If I uh, first, excuse me. For, uh, oh, I have a thought. I have a thought here. I'm sorry, we're interrupting the story. Um, it's like not out of fear you shoot. That's I think common sense. If something like that happens and it's like, well, out of fear, shoot. No, no, you just did logic there, kid. You you did good. But the fact that if that thing screams and then does some kind of like Michael Jordan leap into the treetops, I'm we're running. 
back to the camp and it's get your shit and let's just go. You just, don't need anything. Let's just go. Let's run. Like it's like it's a run by and you grab the hand of each person you came with and you just yeah. haul laugh out. Yeah. Just, yeah. just go. All right. Where was I? All right. So then I heard from behind me what sounded like a man screaming for help. I froze in fear. That sounds like me. Absolutely mortified, I quickly turned and started running back to camp. I wasn't but 100 yards back to camp when Sarah crashed into me. What the hell are you doing here? Her face was cold and expressionless. She slowly stuttered. I heard you yell for me to come help you. I instant oh, instantly, we both knew it wasn't me who called out and we booked it back to the campsite. Nathan. As we go to the edge of the clearing, we could see the creature silhouette by the fire. It started, it stared deeply into our eyes as we became petrified with fear. A sinister feeling of dread fell over Sarah and I as if it knew we couldn't move. I thought to myself, what if it starts to bolt towards us? Just then, this tall, decrepit, demonic thing seemed to whisper something. Then it went black. A spell or something. Sarah and I woke up several hours in the exact same spot. I quickly grabbed my gun and looked around the perimeter to see if the coast was clear. Oh, Jesus. Sarah let out a blood-curdling scream. Where's Nathan? Oh, shit. In the morning, we brought the park rangers at our campsite. We didn't see our son anywhere. We told the rangers that he was missing, and they started a search party. I explained what had happened, and strangely enough, they seemed to believe it. That. The one who seemed to be older by at least a decade pulled the other ranger aside and whispered in his ear. I only heard a single line, and I'm not even sure if I heard it, it correctly. It sounded like he said, it's getting bolder. They didn't seem to want us by ourselves, so they waited with us while they continued the search. 72 hours later, the head ranger come, came to our hotel saying Derek and Nathan were nowhere to be found. Oh my God. Ranger also told us not to lose hope. They were still waiting to hear back from the one search party. We haven't been able to reach in the last 48 hours, but the last time they radioed in, they said they were investigating the sound of a young boy calling for help. Oh my God, it got the Rangers too. Wow. And that was the tale of the Wendigo. So, uh, oof. So first off, it's, it's weird because I know we did like the beast, which was really, that was like, I think our last episode, which was really creepy because it's like, you don't know if it's there or not. Right. This is definitely like a cryptid. It's a creature. Oh yeah. But the fact that it's like, it's smart. Like the idea of men. Well, they're being people, hunted. Yeah. But it's the idea that that is such a smart thing to do if you want to hunt people where it's like, I'm going to mimic their voice. But it's almost like, I, th I think if I got the story right, Sarah called out for help herself when Nathan got hurt and then it could imprint on her voice yeah it's so weird like it knew what voice to do every time to try to get somebody to be pulled in yeah except derek how did it get the main character's voice though i don't know but then guess what when the, when the rangers were looking they used he probably they used, used the, nathan's voice he used nathan's voice to like reel them in right right that's freaking creepy so if you go out in the woods and what and did you it hear whisper? somebody call out for help don't go help them. Yeah, but what did it whisper? It whispered something and it knocked him out instead of a eating. That was a good guess. Like it, something like some kind of ritual or yeah. or some kind of. And, and and part of me was like, okay, but you could have just killed them all. But then in one sense, you know, some animals, I think, well, people will do this, and I think that's what it is. People, in in combat, will injure people on purpose to make others come help them. So wait, what? This is it's a little dark, but I'm going to tie this in. So, snipers in many wars will will shoot and injure one person. Why? Because him crying out for help will make others come in. So now instead of getting one target, he has multiple. 
Oh. The Wendigo is supposed to be a human that actually ate flesh of a person. Mm -hmm. And because he ate human flesh, he's cursed. So right. it's a human being. And so what is he doing? I think it's multiplying. If I kill everyone, no one's going to come looking. But if I only take a few, uh, guess what's happening? It's going to people are going to keep, keep coming. Pulling people in. I mean, I th it, it, to me, it's creepier to think of it that way than he was just sloppy and just let him go. It's the idea that, guess what? Now I have the park rangers coming in. Right. And I just right. got two park They're rangers. They're going to come back for the kid. Yeah. So now I've got even more people. That's creepy. Yeah. And then the whole Derek situation, like, again, Derek, listen. And if you have a son named Derek or if your name is Derek, either change your name. Don't go into the woods alone. And by God, if there's a voice, it's called the buddy system. <laughs> it is a cliche of every damn horror movie ever. Yep. Why send out? And Derek brought a twenty-two. At, at, you know, at least our main guy brought a shotgun. What in the hell are you going to do with a twenty-two? <laughs> oh my God! Catch a bunny for dinner? I don't know. Yeah, if you hear a blood-curdling scream for help, and it's hot, you know, I got me here a baby gun. I'm going to whoop out there in the woods. <laughs> pew pew, yeah. pew pew. Yeah. It's like, would you like me to come? No, I'm good. I'm just going to go out there myself. Would you like a shotgun? Listen, easy. I'm just going to get my twenty-two. <laughs> Oh my God, that was a good story. That was a really good story. Thank you. Um, dang. So yeah, I mean that kind of ends the episode. Just some some final thoughts. Um, when this episode is available and it airs, we will be on YouTube, Apple Podcast, Spotify, and Stitcher. Finally, link to the episodes will be in the description below, and our email is available. Finally, at spirits and ghost stories. Oh, sorry, spirits and ghost stories at gmail.com. Please, if you like what we're doing, respond to us. If you don't like what we're doing and you want to cuss at us, it makes you feel better. It's a little bit of therapy because you've had a terrible day. Tom Do can that. handle it. I can handle it. If you think I'm ugly, that's fine too. I just, I want communication. Let me know you're out there. Let me know you love me or hate me. Send us some stories. Yeah, ab yeah absolutely. If they're good and there's a Derek in it, we will definitely do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Any story with the, with the name Derek from now on. Rip for Derek. Rip for Derek. All right, guys. This is uh, week four. Tom and... Carly Bird. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks. 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 <laughs>